subqueries and other advanced queries. We're going to look at various types of advanced queries. The first type is a subquery, the second type is a hierarchical query, and the third type involves set operators. The one we will look at in most detail is the subquery. What is a subquery? A subquery is a query which is called from a query or from another subquery. Subqueries can be nested. As you can see from the picture below, the select statement contains subqueries and the where clause contains a nested subquery where one subquery is calling another subquery. A subquery is really the equivalent within another SQL statement of an expression. Effectively, a subquery is an expression because it gives a result, a value, or a set of values. In general, a subquery or subqueries can be used to break down complexity. Subqueries can also be used as a very effective SQL code tuning tool which can increase performance and database access speed immeasurably. Types of subqueries. There are a number of distinct subquery types. Let's look at the first one, a single row subquery. A single row subquery has to return a single row, basically a single element. The query calling the subquery requires that single row. For instance, you couldn't say where category ID is equal to multiple rows because it simply wouldn't make sense. You would actually get an error if this query produced more than a single row. Let's take a look at an example. First of all, let's set our columns just to make sure the information doesn't wander off the screen. Now here's an interesting query and subquery. This subquery will produce more than a single row, so let's show the error. And here's the response. Select category ID from category produces all the rows in the category table. We cannot say is one value equal to 34 different values. It simply doesn't make sense. Let's take a look at the query that we had on the screen just now and show it functioning. Here we say select category ID from category where name is comedy. So let's run this query and we find all the rows in the show table that have category ID where the name is comedy and the category ID is 6. 30 rows have the category ID value 6. Let's prove that. Let's go and count the entries in the show table where the category ID is equal to 6. We have 30 rows. Now let's run a sensible query with a single row return subquery for all categories which are comedy. And as you can see, these are all comedy venues with comedy acts. The next type of subquery is a multiple row return subquery. In this case, we would need to check from the calling query into the subquery for membership as opposed to an exact match. So in this case, the subquery can return many rows. So let's take a look at a multiple row returning subquery. In this case, we're selecting from the category where the category ID in the category table exists in the show table. We can prove that by simply counting the groups of categories within the show table. We have seven different category groups in the show table. Another type of subquery is a multiple column subquery. What the subquery does is actually select more than one column. Obviously we need to check more than one column against the subquery by checking more than one column in the calling query against the multiple columns produced by the subquery. Here's an example.
here's a list of rows or should we say venues and acts which have tickets in the ticket table this query here will return multiple columns from the ticket table another type of subquery or two types of subqueries are actually the regular and correlated subqueries a regular or normal or standard subquery is a subquery where there is no relationship between the calling query and the subquery an interesting point to note about in is that it should generally be used for literal values since in is constructed first within the subquery which in this case this is an expression an expression list and then the whole result of the subquery or expression is applied to the calling query let's run that regular subquery we get 10 rows from the category table whose category ID is in that set of numbers 1 to 10 the correlated subquery in the correlated subquery there is a relationship between the calling query and the subquery this relationship is established based on one or more tables in the calling query using the exists clause passing a result from the calling query down into the subquery where the subquery table in this case category ID is matched against the category ID from the calling table this is very important to remember the exist clause is much faster than in in this example why firstly as you remember I said that in will pre execute this SQL statement or this expression within this subset subquery or expression exists will actually pass an index value if one exists on the category ID which is what's used here down into the subquery so you'll match indexes between the calling query and the subquery as I said in doesn't do this because in executes the entire subquery first in is very quick for literal values don't always use indexes it is sometimes faster to read a whole table that's tuning but the difference between in and exists applies in this case because in will use indexes if your files are small you don't necessarily need to use indexes it could be faster to simply read the table and moreover the whole table rather than read the index and the table however when the tables are larger you can use exists and it will perform more effectively because it will match indexes between the calling query and the subquery ultimately the subquery matches between in this case the category and the category IDs between call and query and subquery now I would like to revisit conditional comparisons first of all equality equi ante and range on the right requires a single row subquery let's take a look at some examples first of all I'm going to religiously set my column formats again then I'm going to show you a single row subquery producing an error selecting all the records from category again remember we saw that before and now I'm going to show you a single row subquery that does not produce an error since it does return a single row additionally I now want to show the equijoin not working with a multiple row returning subquery the same applies to an anti join and the same applies to a range join and now let's get a little silly and show subqueries on both sides of the equality sign let's take this query which basically selects a unique name from the category table where the distinct category ID on the left is actually equal to 6 and the one on the right is equal to 6 as well so we're saying 6 is equal to 6 so we copy and paste this one in and just for fun we'll run that one basically what it does is it joins every category to itself in 
in this case, we'll use the anti-join and say not equals, and quite obviously we'll find absolutely nothing because there is no category that is not equal to its own category. Here's another example. What this example does is select a unique category name where the category ID is actually greater than the result of this query, which is 1, and the category ID is less than the result of this other subquery, which is 10. The like comparison also requires a single row subquery to function properly. Here's an example using like. I'm joining everything between at, show, and venue, and I'm saying where the venue name is like. Go and select the first row from the venue table. This query here will actually give me one row from the venue table, which is that venue, and I'm just going to go and select the join between the action and venue tables where that venue is actually equal to that venue here. So we get these records, 3 compart, same as this row. The next example, I'm simply going to reverse like and turn it into not like. So I will ultimately find everything which is not 3 compart, which I found before. And since these are alphabetically ordered, I can go up to the top since the 3, the number 3, is alphabetically ordered prior to any letters, it's not there. The in comparison condition. In can allow multiple row subquery. In other words, in is looking for membership, as opposed to saying am I equals to something or am I like one particular thing. I am asking if I am in a set. In other words, this subquery or expression on the left is either in or not in the results of this subquery. And this subquery can contain many values. But let's look at a simple example using in. And a multi-row returning subquery. Again, exists or not exists. Remember that exists only allows an expression on the right. It does allow, as in does, a multiple row returning subquery. Multiple row returning subqueries imply a membership restriction on the calling query. Here's an example of exists. The same query again. Remember, I'm linking the from table from the calling query into the subquery and matching in the subquery based on the index between the calling and subquery. In large tables, this would be fast because it's matching indexes. And searching on the indexes first, in a small table such as a category, this SQL statement would probably be slower than using the in because the table is so small. It's much faster to read the whole of a small table rather than to read both its index and its table. Here's another example, but now we're going to use not exists and get the opposite result. Now we've found all categories which do not have shows. Obviously we have the parent categories because they're not represented in the show table. And then we will not find, for instance, the comedy category in here, which you can see from this alphabetical order that comedy is not there. Between requires two subqueries. Both of these subqueries must be single row returning subqueries. The team really uses two range join comparisons, such as in this diagram down here, where I say that x is greater than 1 and x is less than 10. In terms of between, it would be the expression on the left, which is x, would be between 1 and 10. Therefore, the subqueries in the between conditional comparison situation both require single row returning subquery results. Let's take a look at an example. And I've gone and put a subquery on both sides. All I've done is I've selected a join between act, show, and venue. And I've restricted the category ID in the show table to between these two subqueries. The first subquery selects the minimum category ID from the category table. And the second subquery selects the maximum 
category ID from the category table. So let's go and quickly do those minimums and maximums. The lowest value is 1. And the highest value is 34. We know from looking at the category table that our lowest and highest values are 1 and 34 respectively. What this query will actually do is to find all of these rows, regardless of the category, because we're looking at the lowest and highest categories. There's 152 rows again. We could restrict this and change this, for instance, to something such as 10. So now we're going to find between the minimum category ID, which is 1, and a category ID of 10. That's found a lot fewer rows. There's just one more thing I want you to remember about between. As you can see, we have x greater than 1 and x less than 10. This would exclude values 1 and 10. Between actually does include the values 1 and 10. So the real equivalent of between is actually x greater than or equal to 1 and x less than or equal to 10. I left this out because this is a common misunderstanding. This way it's probably easier to remember because you're being reminded of it. Now let's look at any sum or all. The subquery on the right is allowed to have multiple rows. So it's again, as in in and exist, it is membership. Any and sum are actually the same thing. All it's saying is that the values on the left are equal to any of the values in here, or some of the values in here, which is the same thing. All is different, and that any and sum implies a subset of the subquery on the right, whereas all implies every single value. In other words, every value on the left must be equal to all of every value on the right. So let's do three very simple examples and let's say that the name from the category table can be any of the category IDs in the show table. Now we know we have seven category IDs in the show table so we find seven categories. In this case here we do the same thing but we do sum and that will give us exactly the same response. Now the all keyword states that every single category retrieved must be in this subquery. Of course that's impossible. I get category ID 1. It is not in 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Let's run that one and we'll actually get no rows whatsoever. The negated version of that says that it's not in everything. So in actuality we get every row returned that is not in the show table. We know we have a total of 34 categories. We know we have 7 categories that are used in the show table. Take 7 off and 34, you get 27. That's the negated value of all. Let's recap. Equi, anti and range comparisons. The subquery requires a single row subquery. Here's the query that we actually executed and we implied that this ID must be equal to the result in this one. Note that the category table is not part of the join between the calling query and the subquery. Like also requires a single row subquery. So we forced this query down here to return one row by the application of row num equals 1. In set inclusion comparison, once again there is no join between the calling and the subquery since the in inclusion causes the subquery to be executed prior to any values being passed back to the calling query. Also, this subquery after the in clause can have multiple rows. In does not have a single row subquery restriction applied to it. Remember that in should be used mostly for literal values or checking on subqueries against very small static tables. Exists. 
there isn't actually a join per se in this query. I like to think of it as a join because what I'm doing is I'm passing a valued result from each row in the calling query into the subquery and I'm matching the two rows between the two tables. There are two reasons why exists is faster. Firstly because it matches indexes. Reading indexes and the table precisely with the index is generally faster than reading a full table scan. Although in this case that's not the case because this table is very small. There is index matching. The second reason is because when exists finds what it is looking for, it stops. It does not search any further. In other words, exists will search into the category table and find for each category row, it will search into the index and find each category ID from the show table. It will not search the entire show table for every single row of the category table selected. The in comparison condition will do that because for every row it will do a subquery execution in theory, although that query is already in memory. It's complicated and that's a lot of tuning. We don't really want to get into that. Just remember that exists is generally faster than in unless in can use literal values or the tables in the in subquery are extremely small. Between, once again, here we have a query example, the one we used. Again, there's no join between call and query and subqueries, but I've simply used two subqueries on the two between ranges to demonstrate that I can use two subqueries. I'm actually finding all the data in the category table with this query. Regular versus correlated subqueries. We've already discussed this quite extensively, but I'm going to go over it again. Once again, there is no relationship using in between the calling and the subquery. This is a regular query. In general, in should only be used for literal values or very small static tables. A correlated subquery, on the other hand, establishes a distinct relationship between the calling query and the subquery. Also, where in will execute the subquery completely for each row, exists will stop for each row when it finds what it's looking for. With exists, the correlation between the calling query and the subquery is established with the table in the calling query, an index in the subquery, and an index passed from the calling query to the subquery. Once again, we see that indexes, if they're properly built indexes on the correct keys, will perform exact hits. That's much faster than searching through large tables and exists will stop searching when it finds what it's looking for. Nested subqueries and replacing joins with subqueries. We can sometimes replace a join with a subquery and it can make the query faster. Let's take a quick look at this query. In this query, we're selecting from ticket, show and category. The columns we're selecting come from the category table, the show table and the ticket table. Here's the join for the three tables, and here are the join statements. There's one thing that we can actually do to speed this query up. First of all, the filtering should be applied first, on the first line of the WHERE clause. What we would need to do is to filter out the shows we don't want. So we find all the shows that are on this date, and we apply that first. After that, we would actually apply the join between the ticket and the show table. So these two lines would be the other way around, shown here. Now what I've done is I've actually taken out the access of the column or the count function from the ticket table. We'll see why in a minute. Back to the filtering. The filtering is now on the first line. So it means that when we effectively, if this filter was up here on the first line, when we join between the show and the ticket table, we'd actually be joining fewer rows because we'd have fewer show records. Aside from filtering, look at the difference between the joining in this query, three tables, and the joining in this query, two tables. And they're very small. The show and category tables are around about one to 200 rows, and the ticket tables are over 200,000. That's a vast difference. Now let's say in this query, I didn't need this count from the tickets table, so I simply join these two tables 
but I want to know that what I'm joining from shown category actually exists in the ticket table. So what I can do is I can pass the ticket join, because nothing is being selected from it, down into a sub-query. And here we have it. We say and exists, select show ID from ticket, where the show ID is equal to the correlation of the show alias from the calling query. Now let's show you another example. Here we're selecting the venue and the seat from the ticket and venue tables and joining them. Here's the join down here. What the exist clause is going to do here is going to attempt to filter some data out so that we join between fewer rows. In other words, we're going to try and filter out some venues or some tickets. What this SQL statement is doing is selecting particular shows based on a show date, and it's also selecting particular shows based on a category. So what we've actually done is we've taken the join from ticket, venue, show, and category, and changed it into a join between just the ticket and venue tables. Here's an expanded version of that query, where we join between all the tables at once. The filtering is once again up the top, but look at the size of the join. We are doing filtering at the top, and we're doing the smaller tables at the top. It is quite possible that this version would be faster than this version. The performance difference would largely depend on the number of rows in the different tables and the relative numbers of rows between the different tables. There's another variation on the same thing. Since we're not selecting from the category table in this query, we can put the category table into a sub-query. This should really be the fastest version of this category subquery because it's using an equijoin. If we were to use exists, this exist version would probably be faster than in if the category table was large, which it is not, so the chances are in and exist would probably be the same speed. Let's go through a few examples showing what we can do with subqueries. First of all, I'm going to set my columns so I can see what's going on. This is a count of a very large join between five tables. This would retrieve a large number of records. Now the idea when writing good performing SQL code is to reduce the number of records that we join. In other words, we don't want to join a large number of tables, get a huge join, and then filter out a lot of those records. So for instance, this query would probably give us a huge result, although we have filtered it by theater. And there we have it, 17,000 rows. Not really the kind of number of rows we want popping up on the screen and scrolling past us. A little bit meaningless. Let's first of all go and find the smallest number of rows in the ticket table based on the show ID. Down at the bottom we can see we have 800 rows on the 28th of May. So we know we've got at least 800 rows. Now let's go and find a specific set of tickets. I shows, 23rd of October 2002. Now let's do a very complex, well what looks like a very complex SQL statement, but it's actually a multi-layered nested subquery. Here we've actually selected the category for I shows. Based on that, we've selected the shows on a particular date for that particular category. We've passed that result up to this query, which selects everything from that query and applies the ticket and show join. The result from this query are the ticket records we need. In the main calling query, we join the venue and the ticket tables based on this join. So let's run this query and see what it looks like. We get 800 rows coming out of there. All I'm trying to do is show you working queries with lots of nested subqueries. Where can subqueries be used? In all these places. Let's go through an example of each. Let's start with the select clause. Here's a simple query which showed us 
we show this the select clause embedded in the select statement. So we picked the show date and the name of the category from the show table by using a subquery into the category table. And here we have it, date and category name. The where clause. Here's an example using the where clause. We selected columns from the show table and made sure that the category ID value in the show table was in the rock popular category on the category table. So let's run that query. And that's our answer. The order by clause. Here's an example of using a subquery in the order by clause. The having clause. Here we're selecting the name from the category, we're counting it and grouping it, and we're insisting that the name from the category must be any of these items which are actually in the category table, but the point is made. We can put a subquery into the having clause. The from clause. We've seen this before. What I've done is I've selected everything from the category table, passed it up into the calling query, and I've simply counted all the rows. I get 34 rows. The insert values clause. In this case, I'm going to insert a new record into the category table. And instead of using the sequence, I'm going to select the maximum category ID and increment it by one to get the next category ID available. And I'm going to add a category name of temporary. And actually, I'm going to roll it back afterwards to make sure that I don't store that row and mess up my data. Point is made. The update statement in the set clause of the update statement. And here's an example. I'm going to set the parent ID to null, but the category is not in this subquery, which selects a category ID from the category table where the parent is not null. So what is this query actually doing? What this query is actually doing is selecting all categories with a parent, and it's going to change every parent and set it to null where it's not in categories with a parent. In other words, since these values are already null, it's not really doing anything, but it's simply not destroying any data. And now you can see it working. A case statement expression. Since the case statement is PLSQL, I've left it out for the moment. A function parameter. LPAD is a function. So I can certainly pass a subquery into the parameter of this function. This is actually the character that is used to pad. Now if we do a select from dual, we'll find we come up with a value of x. That's the default selection from dual. So what's going to happen is it will select left pad, pad out that string xxx to 10 characters on the left with the capital letter x. That is where subqueries can be used as function parameters, in a case statement expression, in the update statement set clause, in the insert values clause, in a from clause of a select statement, the having clause of a group by clause, the order by clause, the where clause filtering, and the select clause. Hierarchical queries. Literally, a hierarchy of data allows you to retrieve data which is constructed as a hierarchy and to represent it as a hierarchy. The category table in our concept schema actually has a two-level hierarchy with parent categories and categories. We can use that example and we will use one or two others to get a better representation. As you can see, a hierarchy is really a tree-like structure. That's what we mean by hierarchy. Hierarchical queries allow us to represent hierarchical structured data in a hierarchical or tree-like structured order.
here's a typical hierarchical query. I have a standard select statement, including the pseudo column called level, which gives us a level in the tree. Connect by allows us to connect parent and child rows. Prior operator allows the connect by to connect between a child and a parent row. Start with will allow us to start at a particular point in the tree or hierarchy. As we said, the level pseudo column will give us a level number for the level at which we are in the tree, for that specific row, in other words. Take a look at this example we have on the right. We have a family tree here, which we will use as a practical example in SQL Plus in a minute. This is a family tree for the Ford company the company that manufactured lots and lots of motor cars. William Ford I married Rebecca Jennings, produced John Ford, he married this person, produced that, married that, etc, etc. Here we have a query which is a hierarchical query using start with, connect by prior and level to produce that structure as a tree-like representation in SQL. William Ford is first, then John Ford with his father William Ford I, William Ford II was followed by John Ford, etc., etc. Let's take a look at some examples. Let's look at the category table using just the connect by. And I have my column formatter in here to make sure I can see everything. Here I have everything represented in what looks like could be a hierarchy. Now let's apply prior to the category ID. and see how it's different. What we should be doing now is linking the parent and child records. Here we have parent 1, category 2, which is actually parent 2, and then 3, and 4 down here. So the parent ID 4 precedes all its child records, sorted in category ID order. Now let's go and create the hierarchy I showed you with the family tree. What I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new table. The error pops up with the drop table command because the table didn't exist in the first place. It's unimportant. Let's go and insert some records and let's make sure we select a few at a time just in case we have any errors, and to make sure that we don't overflow the buffer on SQL Plus and My Machine. Now we have some data in there representing the Ford family tree. Let's go and do a simple connect by and see how it develops. So here we have the name of the child and the parent. Note, within this data I only have connections between father and children, not mother and children. Now I'm going to apply connect by prior and I'm going to start with William Ford the first. William Ford the first happens to be the top layer in the tree, or the top level. And here I have William Ford and my hierarchical structure. Now I'm going to include the level pseudo column so I can see what level is what. Here we go, level 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Now let's go a small step further and change the start with level or point in the hierarchy to John Ford which means we're not going to go to the top of the hierarchy we're going to go part way down it and we'll run this query again and we can see that William Ford as a parent is no longer in the query set operators and the composite queries they produce there are four set operators quickly union all union intersect and minus what does union all do? Union all will take a combination of two queries and include all the rows, including any duplications. In other words, duplications between both tables that have exactly the same values. Both will appear. Union simply removes those duplicates. Intersect actually takes distinct rows from both the queries. It's similar to an intersection or an inner join. Minus produces results that are similar to outer joins. The result is that it includes only the distinct rows in the first query. 
Let's go back to the beginning again and take a look at some examples. The first example, Union All, selects everything between two tables, including duplicates. I've used the Act and the Supporting Act tables because their structure is similar. The data is somewhat different, but structurally they are the same. So now I'm going to simply do Union All between those two tables. I get 72 rows. Now let's go and change it to a union and select distinct rows only. I get a lot fewer rows. Now let's do an intersect or a natural join or intersection between act and supporting act. Quite obviously I get no rows at all. That's because there is no intersection between those two tables. Even though structurally they are the same, the data in the two tables is completely different. So what does intersect do? It selects distinct rows from both the queries. It's like an intersection. In other words, if there is a row in this table that is also in this table, we'll only select the row from the first table, not the second table. So let's try to demonstrate that by creating a union between the same table but using different names in that same table. So I'm going to select these two people and I'm going to get a union between them which produces duplicate rows because I'm getting one row from each table which is the same table, therefore I get the same table times two. This may seem like a rather odd method of explaining intersect but what I'm going to do now is I'm actually going to do the original union between the two supporting act tables and then I'm going to apply an intersection of the same table to the result of the initial union. The result I get is all these records of just this act name. Minus does something different in that it selects from one table where everything is not in the other table. So what I can do with minus is to select everything from act and remove everything that is in supporting act. Now obviously that query won't actually have any effect because the IDs of these two stars as supporting acts are actually not two and three. Therefore they do not match up to the records in the supporting act table. Therefore nothing is removed. Now let's use minus and select all rows from the act table three times but use minus to remove these acts from the entire selection of the act table. If we scroll up we can see that those two acts have completely disappeared.